Oh, there it goes. And uh, John 14, 27, Jesus said these words. John 14, 27, Jesus said these words. Peace, leave I with you. My peace give I to you, not as the world give. Give I to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, there's two enemies just in this one scripture of your peace. Trouble and fear. <coughs> Anything that you're afraid of here today is an enemy to your peace. And Jesus said three times in this passage, Peace leave I with you. Peace give I to you. Peace give I to you. Three times. I wonder why he said it three times. Anytime Jesus said something three times in one passage, he was trying to get a point across to you. He said, I have given it to you. <laughs> See, he didn't say, I'm going to give you peace when you get to heaven. That's not what he said. If you look this up in the Greek, it means peace I give to you right now while I'm talking to you. Amen. Peace give I to you right now as I'm speaking to you. Receive that peace. Present tense verb, he said, receive this peace. I'm giving it to you right now. Somebody just say, I receive that peace. Peace. And you're in it. Look at these two enemies. Trouble. How you doing, brother? I have had a lot of trouble this week. Do you have peace? You can have a lot of trouble and still have peace. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Because Jesus said, be of good cheer. He said, uh, uh, I've overcome the world. Amen. Amen. I've overcome the world. <coughs> Scripture says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Oh, that's a great verse to claim. <laughs> <laughs> many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Yes. Yeah, a lot of things come against us, but God's going to deliver us out here to one of them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were in that, thrown into that fiery furnace, and King Nebuchadnezzar was out there, and he didn't want to throw them in there, but he did. Yeah. Threw them into the fiery furnace, and now they didn't burn. They didn't bend. They wouldn't do what the king wanted. They wouldn't bow to his idols. They wouldn't bow, <laughs> and they wouldn't burn. Because there's a fourth one in that fire. Yes. And Jesus said, guess what? In your trouble, he said, Psalms 91, the very last words, I will be with him in trouble. Yes. He didn't say we're going to have trouble. He said, I'll be with you in trouble. I'll be with you in trouble and I will deliver you. He didn't say we're not going to die, did he? He didn't say our, our relatives are going to die. He didn't say that we weren't going to be sad. He said, in the middle of all that, I'm going to be with you. Amen. And I'm going to deliver you out of your trouble. Yeah. Hallelujah. But we got to keep our eye on him. And the peace that he said three times here. Peace leave I with thee. Peace give I to thee. Peace give I to thee. you got to receive that peace. Amen. You know what the devil wants you to do? He wants you to embrace your trouble and push the peace away. Amen. He wants you to embrace your fear. Well, what if I die? You know the fear of death? The fear of death is the strongest fear on the planet Earth. The fear of death is the strongest fear on planet Earth. And Jesus said, don't be afraid. Amen. Amen. Said, you know what? Well, he said, well, this day you're going to be with me in paradise. This day, he didn't say after the resurrection, after you, you, know, you lay in the grave dead for 30, 50 years until the resurrection. He That's said, right. this day you're going to be with me in paradise. Yes. Hallelujah. Fear, fear tells us, well, we're not going to. We're going to go to hell. We're not going to, we're not going to go to heaven or, or there isn't even a heaven. The devil's just such a liar. Hallelujah. Amen. And then you know what? <clears throat> there is no fear in love. Perfect love has to have no fear. That's right. So if we can embrace the peace that he's given to us, we can reject. See, instead of, <clears throat> instead of embracing our fear, embrace your peace. Push your fear away. Embrace your peace. Push your trouble away. Let Jesus hold Jesus' hand real tight. And let him walk with you through that trouble. Yeah. 
because you don't know my trouble. I'm pretty sure none of us know the trouble Jesus had. And he faced fear head on. He was afraid in the Garden of Gethsemane. Don't you think Jesus was not fighting fear? He was battling with fear. Now, he wasn't afraid of dying, but he was just afraid of all the suffering and all the, everything that was going to go on. And he said, Lord, if I can get out of this, you know, let this cup happen, pass for me. But you know what? The Father walked with him through that whole thing. And he come up out of that grave on the third day, bless the Lord, shining bright. And you're going to come up out of the third day of your situation shining bright. You're just going to have to endure it for a little while sometimes. But you're going to come out on the other side. And we've got to have the faith to know that Jesus is walking with us in our trouble. He's walking with us in our fear. Hallelujah. And you know, the best way to cast fear out is just to get so close to Jesus that the love that's all over him, just perfect love, casts out all fear. Hallelujah. So how to live in peace every day, all right? Well, we we gotta we gotta embrace the peace that's ours. It's ours. Now we'll just kind of go over a couple of things. Uh, recognize peace is God's will. We've kind of gone over these before, but the God of peace be with you all. Romans fifteen thirty three. See, God's the God of peace, and He says, "I know the thoughts that I have for you," declares the Lord. Uh, thoughts of peace and not evil. God's thinking peace thoughts towards you. Peace. And in the, the Hebrew word we told you before, but mean a shalom, and it means healing, deliverance, salvation, peace of mind, freedom from war, freedom from strife and stress. Amen? Amen. We need to claim that, walk in that. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, good uh, and goodwill toward men. Amen. Come on. Go forward. I'm trying to get it. Go forward. Shalom. I already said that. Okay. Uh, obedience to God brings peace. Now, I've told you this before. You just do not have peace when you're in rebellion to God. If you're doing your own thing, you're just not going to have peace. I mean, <laughs> you ever do anything wrong? What's wrong? You going to advance that for me? Oh, you're going to give me battery. Okay. Uh, obedience to God brings peace. You ever disobeyed your parent? And then you try to hide what you did. So they don't beat the royal snot wads out of it. <laughs> and see, if they don't find out, well then guess what? God already knows. You ain't hiding a thing from him. <laughs> so just to pretend like it didn't happen and you're not and you refuse to repent of it, guess what? Yeah, that ain't no good. You're not going to have peace. If you have active sin in your life right now today, you could, or, or, could you be saved and have active sin? Well, yeah, you could. But you know what? You're not going to have peace. Amen. You're a saved person Amen. without peace. Amen. Are you listening to me? And it, in Isaiah 48, 18, it says, Oh, that thou hast hearkened to my commandments, then thy peace had been as a river. There's an if there. If you had done what you were told by God, You'd have peace. Amen. Guess what? When you don't do it. <coughs> you don't have peace. Hello? It's like my dad always said. You're supposed to be, oh, you don't. In other words, I'm going to beat your back. If you don't do what you're told. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to hurt. It's hurt. Yeah. <laughs> if he never said that. That's just what he had said. It's going to hurt you then more than me. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah. Daniel, yeah, this is going to hurt you worse than it is, man. <laughs> we say it's going to hurt uh, us worse, but the truth is it's going to hurt them more. Peter uh, 1 2 says uh, that according to the foreknowledge of God and the sanctification of the Spirit for obedience to Jesus Christ and the sprinkling of blood. May grace and peace be multiplied unto you. There it is. Now it's come up. Oh, I, I want you to go back. I mean, I'm still at two. Thank you, son. I'm at two. Ah, there we go. Thank you. So grace and peace is multiplied when we're what? What's that word in there? Obedient. Any time you have lost your peace, Examine yourself and say, God, mm, am I missing 
missing it somewhere here? Am I being disobedient somewhere here? Amen. Am I totally ignoring you about something that you're trying to tell me? Believe you me, he will let you know if you're willing to hear. Amen. If you're not willing to hear, that's fine. But you're just not going to get your peace. You understand that? You can't have your cake and eat it too. Amen. Hello. And you can't walk in rebellion and disobedience and have peace too. You can't have both. You can't have it. Amen. It does not work that way. Avoidance of sin will bring peace. If you will stay away from sin, you're going to have more peace in your life. More sin in your life, less peace. Just the way it is. There is no peace, saith the Lord, and be the wicked. Amen? But the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. When you're in sin, when you're in rebellion, oh gosh, I just got so much mire and dirt in my life. Check your sin level. Check your repentance level. Check your altar time. Check your prayer and your Bible reading. Are you letting yourself operate in sin? Oh, a little sin, God won't. God didn't want any sin. He doesn't want any sin. Ask him to show you and then ask him to forgive you. Does he forgive you? The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. But what if you don't ask? Listen. You can be mean to me all day long. And if you ask me to forgive you, I'm going to forgive you. But if you don't ask me to forgive you, I might still forgive well, I've been you. Waiting on this for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but if you don't ask me to forgive you, it's it's still hard enough. There's something in me where there's still that little bit of a wall. There's still that little bit of a wall. Somebody hurt my feelings the other day and, and got me crying, and I was upset about something. You know, and I was really hurt. And. Uh, it wasn't too long, they gave me a call, and they said, Will you, I'm, I'm sorry, please forgive me what was wrong. I said, okay, you know. And it was it, that was it. But boy, until then, I had me a wall. I had me a wall. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Is anybody else like me? Amen. Well, God is like that, too. Amen. I'm telling you, God is like that, too. His scripture says, your sins and your iniquities have built a hedge between you and me, so that I cannot hear you. Did you know that's in the Bible? Yep. Yeah. Talk to the hand. Because the hand ain't listening. Amen. You say I'm sorry, and then we'll have a talk. Amen? Amen. <laughs> yeah. Is God being me? No. He just requires as much as you do. It's a, it's a principle of life that if you have done something wrong, you make that, that right with that person. That's one thing I like about our 12 steps is it teaches us to make things right with people that went wrong. Amen. I got a church full of people that don't want, I don't believe in them 12 steps. Well, you know, I probably, probably you don't want to go get things to make things right with them. They require too much of them. If you hurt somebody, you make it right with that person. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Avoidance of sin will bring peace. It's our calling to bring peace. Say, it's my calling. It's my calling. It is. It's not somebody else's. It's yours. Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen? Matthew 5, 9. And Colossians 3, 15. And let the peace of Christ rule in your <coughs> Hearts. Rule. I, I, I brought a ruler out one day and I Mary gave me a ruler and I was measuring people. Oh, got mad at somebody. Got peace with everybody. What's, what's the ruler say about you? Are you bitter? Are you in unforgiveness? Or are you have you given to Jesus? Hallelujah. Give it up, sister. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Focus on the spiritual and not the natural. Here we go. This is good. Romans 8, 6, uh, 8, 6 says, For to set the mind on the flesh is death. 
but to set the mind on the spirit of life and peace. If you're always worried about the works of the flesh, anybody ever read the works of the flesh? Here, just let me show you what the works of the flesh are, in case somebody forgot. I don't know what time it is. Somebody have to tell me in a minute. Oh, well, I got it. Three hours. <laughs> uh, let's look in Galatians 5. Let's look at the works of the flesh. For the to set the mind on the flesh is death. Now, let's not talk about this fat here. <laughs> it's talking about the fleshly carnal desires and natures of the flesh. That's what it's talking about. I'll show you what it's talking about. Uh, Galatians chapter 5. And, and in verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Now think about this. When you're in any of these things here, you don't have peace. Because you're yielding to the flesh. Okay? Now the works of the, flesh, manifest, uh, of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Adultery. Sex with somebody that you're not married to. Jesus said it was adultery if you looked at somebody to lust after. Amen. So that's why pornography is the way it, it does. And it, it attacks people's mind. And God looks at it as if you did it. And you just went in and did it. Amen. And lots of us have struggled with that throughout our life. You know what? And God forgives. But you know what? Amen. If As long as you're involved in that kind of thing, you're not going to have peace. Amen. Amen. Hello? Hello? Hey, I'm preaching better here, ain't it? Amen. <laughs> Adultery, fornication, just sleeping around. Sleeping with people you're not married to. Do you know our whole culture thinks it's fine for you just to sleep with somebody and not be married to them? Do you know that the Bible says that's fornication? Amen. Do you know the Bible says that you're not going to have peace until you straighten out and do it the old-fashioned way. Amen. <laughs> it's, you, don't, you do not have a right to sleep with that woman if, if you don't have a ring on your finger. Amen. 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 You do not get the milk free. Amen. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hello? I've heard people say, well, why pay for the cow if you can get the milk free? <laughs> well, I'll tell you why pay for the cow, because God said to do it that way. Come on. Pay for your heifer. Pay for your heifer. <laughs> oh, my. Well, hey, I have to make it a little funny because it's so serious. And some of you are fornicating on a regular basis in this room. Amen. Amen. And you know what? God don't like it. If he liked it, he wouldn't put it in the book. Amen. 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 The Greek word for fornication is porneo. What did word pornography come from? I hate pornography. The devil has used that to destroy so many of us. I'm telling you. It's another drug. I'm telling you. And if you can't get free from that, get some help. Get some prayer. Get some deliverance. Get some counseling. Get whatever you need. Do something. And people, don't be sleeping with people that you're not married to. Please. God said not to do it. Do you, does, everybody, does everybody in 2015 think God was kidding? No. Do you think God was kidding? Fornication still is fornication. Amen. And you are not going to be at peace until you marry that lady or marry that gentleman. And you, you're not respecting yourself. You're not respecting yourself to give it away for you. Are you listening to me? I'm not judging. Oh, that pastor is just beating us up today. No, no, no. It's not about that. It's not about condemning. I have no right to condemn anybody. Amen. I have my own sins. Right. No, you're not in my head. You have no idea. I might have worse sins than what I'm preaching to you about. But the point is, God said you're not going to have peace until you... To, so get, get over this in this culture. I'm so... 
I had to say it. I'm so proud of Daniel Brittany. That, you know? Yes. They were both virgins when they got married. Me and Nancy were both virgins when we got married. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's a miracle in today's culture. Amen. But you know, I taught this boy that in our youth group. And uh, bless the Lord. They made commitments and that they were going to stay pure and they were going to be married to Jesus. Amen. That was going to be their love. Jesus was going to be their love until they found that person that they were ready to commit their life to. Amen. Amen. Somebody tell me, Pastor, you've gone to bed. Gone to bed. Hallelujah. It says, uncleanness. Now that is, that means sexually unclean. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. That means, this is what, this is the technical southeast Missouri term for lasciviousness. Are you ready for the technical yeah. southeast Missouri term? Dressing like a slut. Amen. Showing more cleavage than what I want to see. Amen. And flaunting everywhere. Amen. And boys going around, you know, showing more than they need to be shown too. Amen. Well, some of the girls think that's fine too. <laughs> I've seen some girls point at some boys and say, that's a fine something. <laughs> so it's not just for girls, it's for guys too. Don't dress in a way that you make somebody lust. You're helping them. Hey, it's hard enough to not say that as it is without you making it harder for me. Hello? <laughs> Don't make it harder for me. Bless the Lord. Lasciviousness, uncleanness, idolatry. You know what? Idolatry, that means anything you put before the Lord. Do you know one of the main things the Bible talks about is an idol? Money. Amen. Money. If money is your God, <laughs> Jesus said you can't serve God and them, which is money. If money is more important to you than obedience to God, throw that money away. Amen. Do you know why Jesus told remember the remember when the rich young ruler came to Jesus and the rich young ruler said, Oh Lord, what must I do to be saved? And he said, Oh, uh, you know, obey all the commandments. You know, and he quoted all the commandments. He said, Well, Lord, I've obeyed all those commandments. He says, Well, okay then. Well, then just sell everything you have and give to the Lord. And, the, and that rich young ruler, what did he do? He left. He was sorrowful. He was sad. Why was he? Because money was his God. Amen. The other 12 disciples, they gave everything they, uh, they gave up what they had and followed the Lord. One of them was a doctor. Amen. So, bless the Lord. Is money your God? How important is money to you? Come on. You know, it shows up. I'll, sh I'll tell you, I'll tell you how, how you can find out how important your money is to you. Write down on a piece of paper where you spend the most money. And put church on there somewhere, too. Or, or God or His kingdom, whatever. And put that somewhere on that list. Do you spend more money on video games than you do on giving your tithes? Do you, you know what I'm saying to you? Where's your money going? Hello? <coughs> I only spent $300 this month on cigarettes. How much did you give the church? Oh, I can only afford to give five. Yeah. Well, yeah. give up a couple of cartons of cigarettes and start supporting the kingdom of God. Hello? Yeah. Come on. Wow, I don't know. <laughs> Am I being too tough today? No. no. You're really rough today. Hallelujah. <laughs> Witchcraft. Witchcraft. This, this is occult practices of any kind. Witchcraft, hatred, variance. Witchcraft is uh, any kind of occult things. Don't mess with the Ouija board. Don't mess with astrology. Don't mess with your horoscopes. 
Don't mess with all that junk. That's old cult. Stay away from it. What about I, I have a whole track down here. I have a whole Bible track down here about occult. Go read it. Look up all the verses. It's not just Old Testament. It's New Testament. Stay away from that stuff. You let demons into your house. Amen. I have watched people let demons into their house. Until they lost their mind. And I had to come and cast a demon out of them that was talking out of them as it came out of them. Okay? So don't mess with that stuff. Stay away from the occult. And witchcraft. And manipulation. Manipulating other people and controlling other people is a small form of witchcraft. Don't go around trying to control everybody. Manipulate them with your anger tantrums and all your, all your other stuff. Don't do that. That's flesh. That's witchcraft. It's evil. Stop it. Emulations, variance, hatred. That is all different types of anger and wrath and anger tantrums and temper tantrums and throwing things and having fits. Have any of us in this room done it? Yes. Have I done it? I wish I could say no. But I have. Wrath. Strife. You, you know what strife is? I say black, you say white. I say red, you say blue. And you just, just want to argue with anybody. If there's not a good argument started, you'll start one. I call it the drama queen spirit. Drama queen spirit. Some people have a drama queen And anybody that wants to be to cast a drama queen spirit out of you, you come up after the service and I will anoint you. And cast a drama queen spirit out of you. <laughs> And then there's a few drama kings, too. Amen. There's drama, 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 drama. It's the devil. Amen. Always have to be arguing with somebody. Always have to be right. Oh, your stinking pride stinks. You don't always have to be right. First of all, you're not right. Nearly as much as you think you are. There's only one person that's always right, and it's Jesus Christ. And the rest of us are usually wrong. Amen. And humility will get you a lot farther with God than being so sure you know everything. Hello? We'll just start arguing. Amen. Seditions. Heresies. Heresies is a group of people that get together and they, they start false doctrines and groups. Envyings. If you're poor and you want what a rich person has, that's envyings. That's a word of the flesh. Amen. Believe God and use your faith. And keep your hands off the rich person. Amen. Let God whip the rich person, and you take your own weapons for your envying. Hello? Amen. Let the covetousness go. The tenth commandment is thou shalt not covet anything that is thy neighbor's. Not his wife. Not his car, because that would be ass, you know, in the Old Testament. And by that I don't mean this, I mean the, you know, don't. And, and on and on. You know, nothing. And then it goes on to say nothing. That's your neighbor's. Right? Are you listening to me? <laughs> I'm having too much fun with you now. Murders. Oh, I could. You know this guy that killed that desk clerk up at the Drury Inns in, in St. Louis? Up on uh, Hamp uh, yeah, Hampton and I-44? I stayed at that very Monday night going to a meeting and I went up to the hospital to pray for somebody and say, go to the hospital and I went to an evening meeting and I stayed at that hint and two nights later somebody was murdered in that. In that. Yeah. At the front desk. At the right. front desk. Yeah. For absolutely nothing but money. Amen. For money. Oh my Lord, have mercy. What has, have we come to in this country to kill somebody for some money? Amen. Blessed Jesus. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, if you hate your brother, you are a murderer. Amen. He said, you've committed murder in your heart if you hate your brother. Amen. Well, that man up there, he was bad. He killed, he killed that desk clerk. I just hate people. Well, if you just hate people, but you're falling off steam, you don't really hate people, God knows the difference. But if you really truly hate people, Jesus said you're a murderer. You need to get that hatred out of your heart. You need to get saved and get that hatred out of your heart and let Jesus fill you with his love. Murders, drunkenness. People, drunkenness in the Greek here is anything 
that controls you. If you got to have a hint of pot, and you got to have a, uh, two or three drinks, and you got to have some Xanax, and you got to have some speed, and you got to have this, and you got to have that. That ain't, you, you're not leaning on Jesus. Amen. You are leaning on flesh and chemicals Amen. and sorcery. Amen. In the scriptures, the, in the Old Testament, in the very last book of Revelation, in the last chapter of Revelation, it says that outside of the city are the sorcerers. The word sorcerers there in the Greek is the word pharmakia, where we get pharmacy. Anything that people use as a chemical to just get them high and get them so they can escape life. Hey, I know life sucks. I know that. Sometimes it really does. But you know what? If you lean on Jesus, it'll suck a whole, a whole lot less than if you if, it, if you take Xanax. Because then you get as addicted as Xanax. And then you go to Xanax addiction. Then you go to the methadone clinic. Then you get addicted to the methadone to get off the Xanax. And then you... How about just get addicted? Jesus. Amen. It's so much cheaper. Amen. And in the long run, now I'm not saying if a person truly, truly needs some kind of medication that you shouldn't take it. I am not saying that. If you truly, truly need some kind of medication, take it because that way she won't drive the rest of us totally freaking nuts. Amen. Hello? But the, what God really wants and his highest aim, Lord Jesus, help my language, Lord, up here in this pulpit. Please help me not to say words like that. I know. But anyway, you got the point, right? <laughs> you get the point. Stop leaning on everything else and getting drunk on everything else. Amen. Gosh, I don't sound like a Baptist today. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> revelings and such. Now, see, revelings, revelings is people who are just constantly rebelling against. Rebelling, rebelling, rebelling against authorities. If the pastor says black, you just want to say white. If the teacher at school says, sit down, you want to stand up. I mean, you just got to. You just got to show them. You just got to show them. You know what I mean? That you're going to do what you want to do. But you're not going to be like that in Jesus' name. Bless this young man, Lord. That's right. That's right. Amen. Yeah, he needs some more. Let go of that rebellion. Let go of that rebellion. And when they say, sit down, just sit down. I just find it so much easier to when they say, sit down, just sit down. Because you're such an angel. And now listen to this. And such the like I tell you, which I have told you before in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Oh, that's heavy. Yeah. Now, the question is: Does that mean I don't go to heaven, or does that mean I just don't walk in the kingdom? Either way, it's not good. Amen. What does that exactly mean? I don't exactly know. But I do exactly know this. Neither one of them is good, so stop it. Right. Amen. Amen. Stop it all. Get your stuff together. Amen? Amen. Get sin out of our life. Get the control of flesh out of our life. Hallelujah. I just, I just love your smile, Jerry. She, she, I wish I could have had a recording of that smile, that smirky smile. I just Amen. Let it go. What time is it? 1147. Oh, I got never oh, Okay, let's move on. You get the point about what flesh is? Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. Alright, now let's go back to my what now? Can you get me back into my sermon? Oh, yeah. And I'll probably lock up on us and then I'll try not to be aggravated. Watch your mouth. I said I'll try not to. I'll probably be not aggravated. I'm not aggravated at all. Not the least. Someday we're going to get this to where this never happens again. Oh, Which one? You got the clicker? Five? Or oh, here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Woohoo! Protecting your heart brings peace. John 14, 27. Peace give out of thee, my peace leave I with thee, not as the world gives. 
You know, they let your, not your hearts. Now, I, did, I wanted to focus on the heart part of this thing. You know what all this is about? And you want your heart. Amen. None of this is like just behavior modification. You know what I mean? Put the rat in the maze, and if it gets shocked enough, you know, that whole deal. It, it, behavior modification is great, though, if you're just driving everybody crazy. And you can't control yourself. You need a little bit of that, too. But really, the big deal is if you can just get your heart changed. I was talking to somebody the other day, and I said, well, I don't want to quit smoking. I don't want to quit doing drugs. I don't want to quit fornicating. I said, well, this is my suggestion. Tell God the truth. Get at an altar somewhere and say, God, I don't want to quit sinning. I don't want to quit fornicating. I don't want to quit drinking. I don't want to quit this. But you know, God, I really want you to change that so that I do want to. God, make me willing to be willing. Amen. If you'll just give God that much, he'll change your heart. Amen. And you know what God just really likes? He just really likes it when you tell him like it is. Amen. And you say, God, I don't want to. At least you're the son and you're the daughter that's honest with God. Yeah. Amen. And I think he likes his children to be honest with him. Amen. Because there's a whole lot of people sitting in the pews that are lying like a dog. Amen. Oh, I just, I just, I just don't have any forgiveness in my life. <laughs> Until a certain topic is brought up and they explode. And then you find out it really was in their heart. Hello? Amen. Oh, my. <clears throat> protecting your heart on the evening of that day the first day of the week the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews Jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you it is God's will for us to have peace in our heart it's good to have it in your head but let it sink Another foot down. Get in your heart. Amen. Amen. Jesus' victory brings peace. Uh, John 16, 33, Have I said these things unto you, that in me you shall have peace. In the world you will have tribulation. But take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen. Listen. Whatever is... You know what? Well, <coughs> whatever's bothering you, it's not bigger than God. Amen. You know what I'm saying to you? Whatever is So I've heard people say, well, I'm afraid I'm, I'm going to die. I said, well, you know what? Why don't you just go ahead and die in your heart? Just go ahead and die in your heart. Just, just give it to God. I'm my God. <laughs> and you know, God, if I die, what's the worst thing that could happen to me? I can go be with Jesus. Because I'm trusting in you. So, Lord, I'm going to let go of this. Yes, I'm going to claim my healing scriptures. Yes, I'm going to claim my health and my strength. I'm going to claim that. But Lord, if I was to end up dying, which all of us on this planet are, hello. If I were, not me. If I were, <laughs> <laughs> not now anyway, that's for sure. If we give that fear to God and face it head on, then you know what? There's nothing that can bother you. I've already faced that fear. Amen. I've already faced that fear. Face your fears head on and say, Hey, fear, I'm, you know what? I challenge you. Jesus is bigger than you. If I die, I'm going to heaven anyway. Amen. 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 So back off. I'm going to enjoy my life. Right? I'm going to enjoy my Jesus. I'm going to enjoy the time I have here. Glory be to God. Romans 14, 79, For the kingdom of God is not in a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Whoever thus serves Christ is acceptable to God and approved by men. So then let us pursue what makes for peace. God wants us to have that full victory of peace, and we're supposed to pursue it. <coughs> Seek peace and pursue it. You know what pursue means? No matter. You ever seen, a, you ever seen a, a, one of these good shows, what's it, one of those, those fast-driving car shows? Help me with one of those. Fast and furious, yeah. I mean, they're in pursuit. 
They're not going to let them get away. Well, you know what this means? This means just that. You being pursued with peace, you're not going to let that peace get away. You're not going to let that peace get away. You're going to, however, whatever it takes, you're going to pursue that peace of God. I mean, make that commitment in your heart today. I'm going to pursue peace. It ain't getting away from me. In Jesus' name, it's not going to. And if we will, I'm telling you, it's possible for you. It's possible to get to this place that I'm talking to you about. Do I do it all the time? I'm sorry to tell you no. I do not practice what I preach like I should. But most of the time, I practice this. Most of the time, I practice this. I practice following the peace of God. Hallelujah. Learning to agree brings peace. 2 Corinthians 13, 11. Finally, brothers, rejoice. Aim for restoration. Comfort one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Amen. If any two of you shall agree, if there's anything they shall ask, it shall be done of our Father in heaven. Learn to get in agreement with people. Amen. Well, I don't agree with him. You don't agree with them about anything? Nothing? Find something to agree with them about. And fellowship with them about what you do agree with them about. Amen. <laughs> If you don't agree with politics, then don't talk about stinking politics. Talk about something you do. If you like shrimp, then eat you some shrimp and talk about shrimp. Hey, I like me some good old Cajun shrimp. We're down at Bursard. Oh, well, let's go get us some good old Cajun shrimp and play some darts. You like darts? Yeah, I like darts. Don't talk about Republicans and Democrats. Just stay off of them. Hello? Find what you agree with and shut up about the rest. You're not going to convince them. Exactly. Do you know you're not going to convince them? No. No more than they're going to convince you. No more than they're going to convince you. So enjoy what you do the about. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It sure is. Prayer being brings peace. What time is it? I tell. Oh, I got another. <laughs> Romans 5 1. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace. With God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Prayer, say prayer. Prayer. How, how many things? Everything. Everything. Everything by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And then what's going to happen? What's going to come? Uh, Thank peace of God, which passes all understanding, is going to hard your, hard your heart and mind. You know what? The reason our hearts and our minds don't have peace. Hearts and minds, hearts and minds, is because we're not taking those things to the Lord in prayer. He said, don't worry about anything, but pray about it. Amen. And the peace of God Amen. will Amen. guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Amen. Prayer brings peace. Get to praying. Get to praying, people. We're, are you a Christian or not? Amen. Christians pray, so start praying. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. See that man praying? Pray, brother. Give God control. Lay your lay yours down. Oh. Oh, that's a tough one. 1 Corinthians 7 15. But if the unbelieving partner just separates, let it be so. In such a case, the brother or sister is not enslaved. God has called you unto peace. Lay your control down. Some of you, you husbands and wives and all the rest. This says, if, if, if somebody wants to leave, let them leave. Somebody else wants to do something in their life, you cannot follow them around. And you can't keep your you can't keep your kids from doing drugs. Right. Right. You can't follow them around, make sure that they don't. If they want to do it, and if they're going to end up in jail, let them end up in jail. That's right. Come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. If if the person who's not believing not in faith, in the relationship. Don't nag them to pieces trying to get them to do something. It ain't going to work. If the more I nag you, it's not going to make you stop. I've been nagging two people about quitting smoking. And they happen to be, you know, quite a bit younger than me. Like lots younger than me. And so I feel like since I'm an old man that I have the right to nag them. <coughs> but I really don't. And they're not going to quit. Then they want to quit. Amen. You know. But, you know, so every once in a while I said, Lord, please help me not to nag them. 
Then I get around and then I, oops, I accidentally nag him again. I call it encouragement. You call it encouragement. This brother's, I like your idea. I'm going to go with his philosophy. I'm just encouraging them. Yes. <laughs> Uh, hopefully, it also won't, won't stop them from quitting. <laughs> oh, bless the Lord. But what, what this scripture is telling us is to, to stop trying to control other people. Stop trying to control other people. Let God have the control. Uh, sow peace and you reap peace. And the harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who are peace. Listen, people, if you give it out, you give it back. Give out peace. Just give it out. Just be peaceful with somebody. Who's not, if they're arguing with you, just stop the argument right there. Just be peaceful. I love you. Don't agree, but we're not going to talk about it. Kill them with kindness. Kill them with kindness. There you go. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Peace is by the blood of Jesus Christ. And this is the last point, and I am done. Hebrews 13, 20. Now, the God of peace, again, that's who he is. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the God of peace. That brought again the, from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The God of peace works through the blood of the everlasting covenant. The, everlasting covenant. the blood of Jesus has so much power to bring peace. If you're in a situation when there is a peace, sometimes I'll just say, I believe the blood of Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus against what the enemy's trying to do. I plead the blood of Jesus against that strife. I plead the blood of Jesus against that. I speak the blood of Jesus against that situation. And I know it sounds stupid, you know, to the mind, but there's power in the blood. Amen. Amen. There's power in the blood. And the Bible says the blood of Jesus speaketh better things than that of Abel. Did you know the blood speaks? The blood is speaking your healing. Amen. The blood is speaking your salvation. The blood is speaking your deliverance. The blood is speaking your protection. The blood is speaking your prosperity. The blood is speaking all of those things. So whenever we speak the same thing as the blood and plead the blood, we're coming in agreement with our, for our deliverance. Amen. Amen. There's power in the blood for peace, Amen. to bring peace. And so as we do that, oh, hallelujah. I'll never forget it. back in the 70s. There was this... Uh, this guy, and he had learned his authority in Christ, and and uh, I, he, he, I think it was in uh, David Wilkerson's book, The Cross and the Switchblade. And this guy had come up to him and, and was going to kill him, and was going, you know, and he he was going to shoot him, and he had his gun out, and and, and he pointed it at him, and and uh, he, uh, I think it was David Wilkerson. He said, "I plead the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus." And, went, and that guy pulled that trigger and the bullet wouldn't come out. And it wouldn't come out again. And it turned around and he turned around and prayed with that guy. And the guy freaked out. He freaked out. And he got to pray with that man to get saved. This was on the streets of Los Angeles. There's power in the blood. I mean, somebody tries to pull a gun on me, they're going to be here. In the name of Jesus, I bind you. You're not touching me. I'll lose my angels after you. That, that, you know, that bullet might get this far, but I think the angel will catch it. If it even comes out at all. I mean, use, your, use the, the name and the blood and the power of your authority that we have in the name of Jesus. Because I'm telling you, whatever's going on in your life, you have a right to walk in peace every day of your life. Let's stand together.